Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings 2022 NFL free agency quarterback movement. Some of them stayed. Most of them have not, at least the ones that we're talking about on this show. Remember to smash the like button for the episode. Subscribe to Mayo Media Network on YouTube or the audio podcast or hell, both of them. Subscribe to both. Wherever you can subscribe, subscribe. Leave a rating and review while you're at it too. And then down in the comments section, please give me your projection for the Denver Broncos record for this year. Joining me on the line, as he loves to do, Jeffrey Feinberg, the biggest loser of all of these trades, I think. (laughs) Okay, good intro. I'm thrilled. Football's fun. Drafts in 50 days. League year is here. Giddy up. Let's go. I think we're going to start running through these NFL shows a little bit more. Throw them in either once every two weeks or so. Just now that we have the entire setup, the new studio, everything like that. So uh, are, are you keen to do that, Jeff? Can we talk some more football beyond the golf that we already talk? Yeah, very much so. And the NFL does such a spectacular job of owning the offseason anyway. They just, between the draft and the schedule and, and everything they do, free agency, they always just find a way to own own the offseason. And I'm sure when MLB comes to a resolution, there'll be something blockbuster the NFL will have to announce then also. All right, well, maybe we can talk baseball towards the end of the show if we have any time. The third member of the team, the coin, on vacation not here right now which means the fourth member of the team is now in studio it is most insane winner six consecutive years tim andergust tim andergust hi everybody so that is your name not my name is your name like the great kazoo or snuffleupagus i'm now visible to you the audience well we're this is a test run we'll see if you're better in the studio or on the line (laughs) It's probably the easiest way to go about things. So you've been needling Jeff now for like five minutes before we went on air. So you take the floor on Russell Wilson going to Denver. Well, I mean, it must be tough for Jeff to go from having the second best quarterback in the division to the third. It must be hard. But it's important that you understand that. Like, only one of the QBs in that division hasn't been to the playoffs in his life. That would be Jeff's quarterback. <laughs> Uh, and in fact, those two quarterback, two of those quarterbacks faced each other in a decisive game last year. And one quarterback was playing for a tie, and one wasn't. And that guy lost. Uh, he was playing for a tie. And Russell Wilson, you know, got that Seattle team to the playoffs two years ago when they had nothing. Uh, he had trouble this year, injured his finger. I think it's great news. Denver is loaded offensively. They have a new coach. They have a new approach to things. Uh, people say the a- AFC West is loaded, and, and sure it is. But like one of those four teams will drop off, <coughs> the Chargers, and you'll have a competitive division where maybe three teams can make the playoffs. I think it's terrible news for Jeff's team. And I mean this in all sincerity. Like the Chargers kind of missed a window the last couple of years with the talent that they had, and particularly last year. And <laughs> Denver has gotten really good. And the Chiefs are only going to be good. as good. And you know, the Raiders are okay. So I feel bad for Jeff. Uh, The AFC West got a lot better, and he spent $500 million on Mike Williams, who, you know, doesn't think Mike, and Mike Williams doesn't think he's worth the kind of money Mike Williams got. So it's it's tough for the, tough for Jeff. I I, I empathize. Right now, Jeffrey, I'm looking at the the Super Bowl odds. The Chiefs are seven to one. The Broncos are 12 to one. The Los Angeles Chargers are 25 to one. And I got to scroll here for a sec. The Vegas Raiders, 60 to one. So it seems like the Raiders did fall a little bit. Although the Chargers stayed exactly the same. Okay, for starters, I mean, last year Tim picked us to the conference final, uh, and he's every time he likes the Chargers, you know, Phillip Rivers has 30 interceptions and never plays for the team again. It so. feels weird to hear excuses in person rather than through the computer. It hits different. <laughs> no, I don't know what to say. I don't have an excuse. Seven teams make the playoffs in each conference. That's almost as much as the NHL and the NBA, which is insane which is an insane amount. We're like now bordering on half the league. If the Chargers can't make the playoffs with seven teams going forward, then that's a problem. That's a big problem. There's a lot of playoff spots, even in good divisions. We saw three teams come out of the NFC West last year. So that is what it is. Justin Herbert is just truly 
outstanding and hopefully he can keep the chargers ultra 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 all right well let's talk about teams that did stuff rather than just the, the they signed mike williams yeah, exactly they signed mike williams, i don't which know is you put this hold on a second i want to talk about denver diatribe diatribe throwing like seven knives at me i respond for 44 seconds and you're like let's move on yeah you okay wish you had what we had so there's nothing to even call. Co- I wish my team here. could screw up the end game so badly that I missed the playoffs when the other team was trying to tie. I don't even I don't know. I feel know. like the Jets I, are capable I, of that. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. The Chargers have Justin Herbert. I actually watched the end of that Raider game, not the overtime, for the first time since it happened. And I was probably so deep into a lot of things when it happened live that it made me like excited and magical, like what we could be capable of i fully expect both sides like every part of the chargers to grow they gotta get better they got money they'll spend it on defense they got even after the chargers went from having a ton of free agent money to signing mike williams to a lot of money to then still having a ton of free agent money tim on the other hand is kind of out of the loop because yeah what could i know yeah, what can I know? No, I just mean like you should have seen what the offers would have been for Mike Williams good. from the Bears. Let him or... go. He's not that good. You don't think he's that good. I think he plays a piece on the team, and there's so much money. There's so much money. You don't have to let anyone go who's under 30 years old. That's the thing. If you let a player go under 30 years old in the National Football League who you think has yeah. talent or is good, okay, you're kind of in problem. There's just so much money around. The Chargers have so much of it. The way they structured the contract with their $70 million in cap room this year, they're actually getting a lot of credit for. You hating on everything right now is actually the greatest way the Chargers can start the season. Then don't I complain. Wasn't expecting, hold on. I wasn't expecting to come in here and start this on Chargers radio. You kind of hit me upside the head well, with, your, I mean, with, your, with your attacks. Well, it's just an attack. I'm annoyed. What? It's only an attack because I'm trying to soften the ground for you to accept that the Broncos and Chiefs are just much better and that there's a chasm, a gap between the two. There's no I if, ands, or buts about that, and the odds reflect it, which yeah, is man, nice to much see. much better. The Chargers played the Chiefs. They beat them one time. They lost in overtime the other, the game they should have won. They'll be very competitive versus Denver. Like, I don't know what to tell you. They're about to sign a corner. They're going to sign defensive tackle. They're going to bring in a linebacker. They're going to invest in the draft. The same things they did to the offense and offensive line last year in terms of offseason capital. The resources are going to go to the defense next year. For you to just write us off, I mean, that's fine. It's the middle of February. To Pat's point, I'm a little perturbed because you can't make the Broncos 10-1 to to win the Super Bowl and then not give me a bump the other way. So hopefully in due time that happens. You can laugh at me for betting it. But I'm going to bet it anyway. The Chargers are part of an ultra-competitive AFC. Their quarterback is out of this world. Out of this world. You would, you would, I, I couldn't even tell you what, what, what you would give to have what I have. So we can just move on. A lot of your, I think you're envious, to be perfectly honest. Jealousy. Seething. I can see it in person yeah. now. Be, beware I, the green-eyed monster. It is the jealousy that doth my, m- mock the meat upon which it feeds. Uh, I like that now I mean, that you're You're telling studio. me my team sucks, and you're projecting like a I didn't say your team was awful. Yours. I just said your team is going to fall back some, because it is. And well, where are they going to fall back to? Well, they, I guess they'll squarely fall back. They were already in third, technically. Uh, they could challenge for fourth. I don't know. <laughs> and you're going to win. You're going to compete for first. I the get Jets it. are lucky. I'm going back to the moon. They'll be lucky to win four games this year. Maybe three games. Who? Be, the Jets. Maybe three games. Maybe three. If we're lucky. If things break our way. Three or four. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. He's, he's finally learning, Jeff, is what he's doing. I'm not doing anything. I'm speaking the truth. Living your truth. This is going to be a rough year for no. both of our teams. And no, I've. Denver, hold on. That. But. Wilson, like, what a nice move for it's the Broncos. A great move. A great move. Now, there are people who I do respect, who maybe I should respect them less today, who are, like, very pro that it was a much better trade for Seattle and Denver overpaid. I'm not there. Like, I don't see I, it. I think, I think you a- can. I think you can most definitely make that case. Because if this is a lot like the Peyton Manning situation with Russell Wilson. Maybe you get more years out of him. But I also don't think, like, the first year with Manning – when he played ceiling Manning ball, they were unstoppable. Yet they somehow lost to Seattle anyway when it came to the Super Bowl. They needed noodle arm Peyton Manning in order to win the Super Bowl with that beefed up defense. Okay. 
But we're now at a spot where if this doesn't go well two years from now, everything kind of swings back to the Seahawks and what they got in exchange for this. Like, they basically own everything that the Broncos have for the next two and a half years. They have, and they're, and I mean, they released Bobby Wagner too. They are legitimately rebuilding at this point. Good news for the Jets. We don't have their picks anymore. Well, of course, they <laughs> bought them out the moment that we don't have their picks anymore. But look, I think we could have had this exact conversation this time last year about the Rams and about Matt Stafford, who, like Russell Wilson, isn't the, a top five quarterback in the league. And they but won. Is, but, 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 they won. But, but they won. What I'm saying is, this is Who's a, older? Who's is, older? I think they are... I think Stafford was drafted in 09. But Wilson played Wilson, four years, then transferred to Wisconsin so and played within, another year. So they're probably within the same age bracket. But look, because would you agree or disagree? But I would say I saw more stuff that Wilson has less in the tank. Like, and I'm surprised by the amount of like Wilson okay. doesn't have a lot left takes. But I feel like with Stafford last year, I didn't really see that. It was a lot of questions like he's never won a playoff game. He has a lot to prove. But I didn't see like... He he is um I don't want to say damaged goods, but there was a there's a lot more of like Russell has a lot less left than Stafford. So it's really weird, but I, I agree with you. Maybe the negative takes are very, very similar. Great move by Denver. Right? Even if it backfires, it just shows your fans whatever. You get more yeah, picks. I the agree. picks never run out. They get recouped. I don't know what to say. They potentially have a quarterback for a decade who's going to the Hall of Fame. So I'm not going to diss the strong. trade. I'm going to commend them. Yeah, Decades well, strong. Well, let's call let's it five, five years. years. Let's, call, let's call it five years five with years Russell years. Wilson. And look, he says he seen, wants to seen, play till he's 45. When we see teams do this, more often than not recently. Whether, Good players follow but, along. No, it's been super successful. Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl. Tom Brady won a Super Bowl. Uh, Matt Stafford won a Super Bowl. Bringing in a quarterback who isn't the best QB in football, or bringing a good quarterback to surround a team that's got a lot of talent actually has paid a lot of dividends in the last 10 years. And so if you're looking at history as a guideline, this is likelier than not to be very successful for Denver. Well, when you look at it too, it's almost you... more like better, more successful than getting first overall and getting a great quarterback and winning the Super Bowl. Almost, except not. I mean, in modern history, I mean, like yeah. at least. When we think about the offense itself, like it, it would be a skill position downgrade, probably slightly, because how good are Metcalf and Lockett without Russell Wilson? I suppose we really don't know no, that. we don't. Right now. But so you get Judy, your guy, Judy, Judy. Back, back. Thank God you traded him to me in that keeper league. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah. You traded me, <laughs> was it Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy for... Jamar Chase, and I got a first No, no, I, I drafted Jamar oh, Chase. Oh, for Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle, and I also acquired uh, Calvin Ridley. And you Cal oh, yeah, I forgot. We'll go get to, I forgot to get, we're going to talk about Calvin Ridley here in a minute. So maybe he can bring Sutton up to the level. Uh, they had no problem getting rid of Noah Fant because they have big Albert O just and lurking Tim in Patrick's the And a good receiver too. But the biggest thing is Denver's offensive line is pretty good, whereas Seattle's is god awful. Absolutely. So I don't know if Wilson was cooked last year. He didn't care last year. Did the finger bother him to the point he tried to rush it back? Probably, considering yes. he came back four weeks early from the projected timetable of what Definitely. was supposed to happen. Definitely. But you don't need to. We're right here. We're right here. <laughs> sort of. There's actually a huge chasm. There, there is. It just how it's it, it doesn't. But look at the screen. It doesn't look like that. I know. It's like just, Putin's desk. <laughs> it, it's not dissimilar to it. I feel like I'm at the end of a long, uh, you know, English style dining room. Well, here's what we're going to do. Next time you come in, I'm going to get out the fanciest china I got. I'm going to put it on the table, load it up with Big Macs, and you can smile right behind it. That would make me very Th happy. That is the type of table that this is. <laughs> Either way, I think they can run a more Russell Wilson style offense. Because really all I've heard is now that he doesn't run, he's not effective. Because he's not really a great pocket passer. His whole thing, it's a lot like Rodgers. He needs to move the pocket. He needs to get outside the pocket, extend plays, look downfield, and be able to take off when he does. I'm not looking for Russ to go 11 for 75 on the ground every game. He needs to go like 4 for 20 and pick up those critical first downs when he needs to do them. Does he still have that in him? I think is where people are kind of on the fence right now because we haven't seen it in two years. Basically, he had it, it going at the beginning of last year. Remember there was the Patriots game? Cam versus Russ on Sunday Night Football, and they just went back and forth. Yeah, it was a down fantastic ball game. And then, you know, the second half of the season, Russ stopped cooking, and he really hasn't been the same since. No, but he was hurt, and like whatever, like he doesn't have to be Russell Wilson of 2017. He just needs to be 
better than the sub replacement level quarterback in the Denver. Denver went what seven and ten or eight and nine last season with nothing. Give them a little something. We're business. I mean, the Chargers have a great quarterback, but I mean, it sort of stops and ends there. Like, and the Chiefs are loaded, right? The Chiefs top to bottom outside of like safety are loaded. And the Raiders are just scrappy and they have good players. So the Raiders project to be very bad this year. They probably, they probably will have troubles. I don't doubt. They got your boy, Josh McDaniels coaching. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a fan of Josh McDaniels and I don't. Yeah, wish he might well. be looking for a way out of this job too at the moment. That'd be a tough scene. Wouldn't surprise me. Once a Patriot, always a Patriot. Qu- quit two teams before you, as head coach before you ever coach a game. Well, it is a Belichick staple to quit a job that you got. So, so do we like what Seattle's doing right now? I don't think they have a choice. Yes, because the combo of it sucks that it came to this. It's crazy that they picked Carroll over Wilson, but the two of them together was clearly like a dead fish situation. So at least they're no longer in what it felt like this dead fish situation and they're completely hitting the reboot you know we've inc- you mentioned the bobby wagner thing there's some people that assume when you consider that all these receivers got tagged or extended and how premium it is right now what they could probably get if they wanted to put dk metcalf on the market right now for a trade as well potentially i think that would probably be a pretty smart move if they are really going to do this full rebuild they, they have to find a quarterback now. he's too young he's too young to do that with and then do it. With, I mean, lock I, it. I, I'd hang on to him. I think he's a, a valuable piece to keep. Actually, he it's is. the NFL. You never need more than two years to turn a team around. I suppose, but, but you, you need could to find probably get right more away. for him with the free agent state of of receiver with Adams and Williams and and Godwin and I mean, just sure. look who's now the best free agent receiver. You should answer the call. You could get a blown away offer if you dangle him. You can, but you could also potentially go out and sign Amare, who just got cut. You can sign Allen Robinson. Like, there are guys out there not... I mean, Amare Cooper's like 26 or something. No, he's not that that young, but nevertheless. Are you sure he's not that young? I don't think he's 26, no. Amare Cooper age. I would guess 29. 27. Okay, so if this is Price or Right, Price is Right. I would win. You win Thank because you. I went over, yeah. <laughs> but he's much younger Which, than Which, by the way, I can't watch anymore, I have to say. You can't watch Price is Right? All the games are different. All the games are different. When I grew up at noon and you watch The Price is Right, I knew about Plinko and the Yodeler. You, and, don't, you don't hit the table. And all those fun <laughs> games. I'm sorry. I'm used to pounding the table. <laughs> I'll, I'll, get, I'll get you a pounding mat. I would How like about a that? gavel, like a judge, actually. Uh, and... I'm so I'm used to that. And what happened now is you've got all these games that no one has ever heard of, and I don't know who they're supposed to attract. And I don't find it interesting. Like I like to watch Prices Right at lunchtime. If you're home from if you're working from home and you have lunch, flip on the Prices Right. It's a fun thing to watch. You can't figure you can't follow the games anymore. And like anyway, it makes no sense. It's frustrating. They don't have the big crowd where people can run through anymore. I always thought I'd be really good. Was well, that, that a pandemic thing? I don't know. Now they got like pods of people, but like it's, it's the United States. Like I don't think there's a we're worried about that. Well, it's in California, though. Still yeah. California. Yeah, well, that's California's still the wild, wild west compared to anywhere else. So, anyway, Price is Right has not been good recently, and it's frustrating me. Did you say you think he would be good at running down yes, the stairs? I always thought I would be. I always dreamed about being called. Dream, <laughs> dreamed is one thing. Being good at. Do you think you're I like, know the strategy. Do you think you you're never nib- want to use the $1 bid till you're the last person? No, I meant the running down the stairs part. You think oh, you're nimble yeah. enough to run down the stairs? Like the going head of, over? Yeah, it'd be like the opposite of Rocky running up the stairs. I'd be running down the stairs. R- running downhill and running downstairs, much tougher than running uphill and They aren't that upstairs. steep, and it's inside, and if you fall, they never put it on TV anyway. So I, it's not like they, they run the prices right live they uh, from Beverly Hills. So I, I think I'd have been really good at that whole thing. And now it's like a, that, that's a dream lost. I'll never be able to do that. Devontae Adams is not going to the Jets like you predicted. Predicted, wished, hoped. I think had Rodgers left, Adams was gone. But insofar as Rodgers stayed, Adams stayed too. So you don't think that if Rodgers left and they had Jordan Love, you don't think that they would have franchise tagged? I don't. I with all the salary coming off for Rodgers, which apparently the salary cap doesn't exist anymore if you're Aaron Rodgers uh, and the Green Bay Packers, that you can franchise Adams and pay Rodgers $50 million a year. Wouldn't you want Devontae Adams to be there for Jordan Love? You have the money to franchise him. You franchise him. He's the, one of the three best receivers in the NFL. I think they would have traded him before franchising him. You, they would Either have way, had yeah. to franchise Still, him and then trade him. Okay, but it, would have been, okay but it would have been a tag and trade. But I don't know. Why would you get rid of your best receiver with your brand new quarterback who could probably use as much help as possible? I don't know if Adams is the right receiver for him. Wouldn't Adams be the best, best receiver, receiver on anyone? earth? He's, he's, he's not the best receiver on earth. Who is? That's silly. 
right now, if I had to pick any wide Calvin receiver. Calvin Ridley. <laughs> no. I mean, I would be obliged to take yeah, Cooper Cup. Jefferson, who? Cooper, I would be obliged to take Cooper Cup. If you were starting, if you were like real life, all players are available in a draft, you would draft Cooper Cup over Devontae Adams? For one season? Yeah, I would. For one season. I, I Does does Cooper Cup get to bring John McVay with him? No, I don't think he needs to. He's that good. I don't see. I, as long as he has a decent quarterback. I think that Cooper Cup is very good. I would think that pure talent, Devontae Adams wins that. Maybe. Maybe. Not, not that I don't like him. Or Mike Williams. Williams. I One wanted him on the... Oh, yeah, well, Mike Williams from the Chargers is Terrell Owens 2.0, which is why you back up the Brinks truck, and then you empty it, and you back up another Brinks truck, and you empty that, too, because money doesn't matter when you're the Charger. You have so much talent. Uh, I guess maybe Mike Williams plays every Sunday, which is not like most of their players, so maybe that's a help. I don't know. He does not play every Sunday. No, I know. I'm needling <laughs> that, too. I was glad to see, though, that the former Charger... It's a pay-as-you-go contract, by the way. A pay-as-you-go contract, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, got, you got one of those like credit cards that Cam has to use to go bet <laughs> online. Yeah, pretty much. Michael Listen, <laughs> yeah, it was a very... Um... It's like my cell phone plan in college, which is you buy the card and you pay-as-you-go. <laughs> or, or just use a payphone. Pay-as-you-go. I used to have a payphone s- skill. What you do, right, is you pick up the phone and say, I just put a quarter into the machine and I can't dial. Who are you talking to in this circumstance? Well, this is like 15 years ago. You didn't make like, a when you just pick up pay a payphone. Phone. There's no one on the other end. You push zero. You push the operator and say, I just put a quarter into the machine. And then it would die. You're Tim too rich. You can't afford a quarter? Well, back in those days, I wasn't nearly as rich. I, I guess so. <laughs> so Packers running it back. I've heard a lot of... Yeah. Why would you bring back Aaron Rodgers just so they could lose in the NFC Championship he next year? He just won two champion. He just won, sorry, two uh, MVPs. Like, <laughs> is he worth fifty million? No. Well, but is, what are you going to do? But, but is he but worth? What are you going to do? I would say he is worth the fifty million. No, I don't think he if is. If you have but... one of the ten quarterbacks in football, pay him whatever. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad deal. I'm, am I saying he's being overpaid? Yes, but that's the nature of the business. You have to overpay him to keep him. He won two MVPs. It's it's unfortunate. In the sense that, well, I'll start off by saying I, mean, I think you they could should have be the, the greatest QB ever on Jeff's Jeff's team on a rookie contract. But those people aren't as lucky as Jeff's team have to, you know, spend fifty million on a quarterback who can make the playoffs. I don't know why this keeps coming back to me. It's it's March, man. The way it works is that it's whoever's March. not in the studio gets ganged up on. How do you like it? <laughs> How do you I like it, know. Jeff? You're trying very hard. You're trying not, very hard. It's I'm, March. I'm not Just trying hard. Believe me. Energy. If I were trying save hard, you, you, if I was trying hard, you'd know it. And the good thing about you being in <laughs> studio for you now is that you can talk over Jeff and he gets drowned out. Would, won't that be nice? Won't that be nice? Um... So I think the Packers are the favorites to win the NFC. I imagine their offseason will continue to be a bit of an all-in effort. Yeah. The thing about Rodgers, though, is maybe this is a silly way to look at it from the outside. Hero. But when you're that veteran quarterback trying to win a su- another another Super Bowl, um, and I guess he needs all this money to make up for all the bad will he feels was there, so the money makes up for it. But That's at this point in his for. career... You should be doing, this might sound ridiculous, but, you know, the the motto is you do more for your team and your contract to help them, you know, be great and win the Super Bowls. And you don't need $50 million a year. But, you know, I guess the relationship got to the point where that was the only way they could show him that they still loved him. So now he's the highest paid player on on planet earth and he the, deserves it just the way that maybe it's because there is so much ill will towards aaron Rodgers from the media for reasons unknown who knows why that could be the case he seems like such a cuddly friendly fellow i right? actually love aaron Rodgers. oh doesn't mean that he's not funny and whatever that's but, the thing like he's he's, but he's not, not like a fun guy no he's de- most definitely not a fun you guy you wouldn't want to call him a friend i don't think uh, well i don't he, know he about- honestly strikes me as the type of guy that like you know Reads a couple books and all of a sudden thinks he's the smartest man alive. Or listens to some, you know, lectures and thinks he knows everything about geopolitics. That's, I didn't say that. I, I know, said I I've know. been Easy. burning. Honestly, that wasn't even on air. So getting... I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to understand that reference. <laughs> uh, either way, I think if he wanted to be, if he wanted to quit next year, take his guaranteed money and go home because apparently that's a part of the clause of the contract. Sure. And he wanted to be the new Sunday night football announcer. I think he'd be great in the booth if he wanted to do it. Yeah, but he wouldn't. I don't think he would. I don't think he'd want to do it either, but I feel like he'd be great. Maybe. I mean, he's never really done any commentary outside of like... He hosted Geo Party. Well, he's on... 
I mean, he was on the Manning cast for like a quarter. It was fine. But like, I don't know. I think he's just sort of the he sort of guy who just He likes attention a lot. He's not going to go away like a, Honestly, a Joe Montana. Who doesn't like, and love just... attention? Come on. I don't, I, don't, I don't love Besides Tim, who doesn't love attention? He just loves Menchies. Yeah, and the credit that I have coming to me. And doesn't Russell Wilson need a contract in like a year? Probably. I would imagine. I think, yeah, I think he's due for a renegotiation, particularly if he plays well. And he should. Because, like, yeah. it's the Chiefs and then a couple of tomato cans in his division. So he'll play well. Back to Honestly, the Packers. stop. <laughs> you <gotta> stop it. <laughs> You're bullying poor Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Because we're not that, like, we're not, we, we're flawed. And we've got to grow. But we're not what you're claiming we are. What am I claiming? Yet you're claiming that they're the Jets. Oh, no, no, no. They're not the Jets. They're, like, they're not a complete, they're not a joke. Like, the Jets are a joke. The Chargers are just See, in a bad, a normally victim of circumstance. Normally, it's the reverse. Like, you're so high on the Jets. Not, though. No reason to be. What's there to be high about? So, but, so you can't be high on the Jets. You've got to, like, literally throw, like, a dozen knives my way today. Well, you know, just thought I should lay my cards on the table. And then, listen, I'm not happy. The only thing, the only positive about the Russell Wilson news is that it wasn't Aaron Rodgers. Sure. I can understand that. Also, and I, listen, I felt some of what Tim feels. I make one tweet. I make one innocent tweet after the Rodgers news comes out, making a joke that the books can now take, uh, they can take their 20 to 1 Broncos odds down. And they did. Which is true, because they're 12 and 10. But I was like, oh, you're cussed, you're cussed, you're the new Tim. And to my respond to that is, I didn't know hitting one home run made me Babe Ruth, but... <laughs> I guess I'm Babe Ruth. So. Well, just well, there's just a taste, Jeffrey, of what I go through every day. How is uh, trading for Calvin Ridley working out for you? Pretty steady as it goes. He didn't play once for me last year. Not gonna play it all for me this year. You're gonna keep him? <laughs> you, I, I might as well. So he's your red shirt now. Well, my keeper team is done for the season already. You so. have Jamar Chase. You have Calvin Ridley. Yeah. You have Jalen Waddle. Look at you, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. Yeah, but J J Joe Burrow's not a, a a keeper fantasy player it, within our rules, where you can keep three guys. So he's not going to be one of your keepers. He probably will be because I'm stubborn. Because you traded Patrick wow. Mahomes for him. I, listen, I don't regret that, and a first round draft pick, which I ended up using uh, effectively to acquiring Jalen Waddle. So this is fantasy football, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're throwing in first round picks to get rid of Mahomes. I was acquiring a first round pick so that I would be able to go all in this year that we had. Which he did. And he, he, he traded me Elijah Moore, Jerry Judy, and a first round pick for Jalen Waddle. I feel bad for Calvin Ridley. I do too. Yeah, well, let's talk about Calvin Ridley then. Calvin Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> Here's how you know that he wasn't fixing games. He made an eight team $1,500 parlay. He's basically Jeff. Yeah, I was like, that's something Ka Jeff or Cam would do. <laughs> I don't have those. No, trust me, I don't have those. And if I did make an eight-legger, I'd probably hit about three of them. I'm not about crazy parlays. You don't really see those in my pendings. But, yeah, you don't have actionable info and make a multi-leg no, parlay. You that's do just not. not how For 1500 bucks works. when you're a multimillionaire. And that brought out some of the most embarrassing takes, like in old curmudgeon sports media, Pat. Uh, you know, like... Um, buddy who used to wear the glasses and be top of the mountain in Canada for a while. Like people talking that that <laughs> who <laughs> I know who you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just saying like some old curmudgeon sports media. You just wanted to like, say the names so you can write down like, the enemy list. How can not have inside info on the game? You don't have inside info and bet multi-leg parlays. Even, I don't know. I think the league could have examined it a lot closer. He was in Florida. It's $1,500 worth. Was he communicating with anybody? Like, he was just probably bored as fuck at home. I don't want to excuse it because you think he shouldn't, but... And I know they're trying to drop a hammer in their new relationship with gambling because, you know, the next offender is going to get screwed too, and it's a fine line they're trying to walk, but they're going to let Steven Ross off the hook. And that's the saddest part about all of this. I completely agree. And, and listen, I have no problem with the year suspension for gambling on football. There's, there's one fucking rule. Don't gamble on yeah, football. You have to be as 
clean as Caesar's wife when it comes to this sort of stuff. But when it comes, I mean, I guess you can prove this because, I mean, in participation with the NFL, whether it be DraftKings, I think this one was like hard rock gambling <laughs> app in Florida, which I've never heard of. It uh, lasted for like a month. Like gambling was open at some seminal hard rock for like a month in Florida. Oh, I went there. Um, <laughs> But, 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 Pat, here's the thing. All these guys, like so many of them, like just take Chargers Austin Eckler, for example. Like he's building a brand on talking fantasy. All these players, they make jokes about their fantasy team. You think they're playing fantasy football for 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 free money? For, for free? No, yes, but no. But, their... well, yeah, yes and no, because there are provisions apparently within the CBA for the NFL that you can play fantasy football because they want to promote that. I don't think they're playing million-dollar leagues, and if they are, they're probably playing with the guys on their own team. And like, these you things know, are all collectively right. It does seem like it's locker room, like locker room leagues or like best friend home leagues and stuff. You're right. It doesn't look like they're going to Vegas for the uh, – I don't know, whatever you call it. I know they, they have the big baseball things, but, you know. What the I'm big draft. About, but, but, the big draft with all the big monies and all the big people and all the big modes. Come to Vegas and draft fantasy baseball, which isn't happening. The average age of rotisserie fantasy baseball is like 66. Oh, my God. It, it's I, I took a call the other day with a guy like trying to promote baseball. I, was like, I don't even know if baseball is happening. He's like, just, he gave me the rundown about like where he wants to advertise. I was like, I could just look into this camera and tell people to play at blank fantasy baseball. You'd probably get like 400 people to sign up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but the and he's like, that's not how that works. I'd rather take out an but, ad in the newspaper. Say, if you take out an ad in the Sacramento B classifieds, <laughs> then you're going to get dozens of people looking for the obituaries who will stumble into that. But here's the thing. Like, you would assume now guys like Calvin Ridley, the assumption was the players now make so much money that they don't need to chase some side hustle that can get them in such trouble. But, you know, I have no doubts that there's people probably affiliated with like trainers on the teams that could be texting their buddies, A, to give their buddies the info to make the best for them or just to be the cool guy in the group with the actionable info. So. I don't know. Just because of the way the Ridley thing was, like the amount was so little, it was parlays. Like I would kick a guy out for life if it was just this, you know, um, Excel sheet of of huge single play games. But I don't yes, know. This I Ridley agree with thing that. feels so different that. It, it, it feels different, but the example needs to be made now before it ever gets to the next level. You just said, hey, Kelvin Ridley, you know you're not supposed to do this. We, you knew what the punishment was, presumably. I bet you he didn't know that he couldn't do this. Probably not. And it's such low stakes. No, you can't. Every, every team, I swear to you, Pat, in the locker room, it's like big... Like, um, like Jeff, Jeff I tell you poster. things all the time that you immediately forget, and I tell them to you every single week. But there's a sign walking in and out of the locker room. I swear to God that says this. I know in baseball, it, there's a sign, like, as the players walk in and out of the locker room. Either way, if, you, if people out there think that NFL players and athletes in general are not betting on their sport, they're just getting their brother to do it, they're fucking insane. Yeah. It's just Kelvin Ridley's... You, 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 Kelvin Ridley logs into DraftKings under the username... Falcons, Calvin Ridley. I want to make some bets. Like, <laughs> yeah. In, in in some ways, the penalty is is for lack of discretion. It, it, else. Really, he's he put himself out there to be caught, and because the relationship with the leagues have to be so tight between the league and the operators, they have to rat him out. Yes, I mean this they is why to. gambling wasn't allowed for fifty years. And you have to make the example of him now because he just bet fifteen hundred dollars and lost mind you i assume he, he, he bet an eight leg parlay i assume he lost yeah he doesn't hit the free he, money at the length but he just lost 11 million dollars is what he lost absolutely any year of his career uh. and he gets somewhat tarnished although reasonable people don't seem to have like i would consider myself a reasonable person you two not so much although you guys seem to be on the same page anyway that it's not that big of a deal what he did once you know the context of what he did. Not a big deal, but I still would have suspended him a year or two. I would have too. I completely agree. Those are the rules. You broke the rules. We need to make an example before this gets too big. Yeah. But as Jeff pointed out, the Stephen Ross stuff trying to pay, if that's true, he, but do you think that anything would ever happen to him? I don't think it would. If there was actionable intelligence, I mean, I think there could even be criminal charges. I mean, there's antitrust uh, regulations that apply to professional sports teams. And if you're essentially fixing games, like that's... Well, well, the thing is he didn't fix the game. But to attempt to fix a game is like attempted murder is a crime too. 
Well, you don't win a Nobel Prize for attempted chemistry, now do you? <laughs> the, the concern would be if the NFL makes a big deal about it themselves, then it becomes an even bigger Agreed. story than us just yelling about the hypocrisy. But here's sure. the thing. I don't, our... I don't like that you can beat up your girlfriend and throw her on a pile of illegal guns and get two games. And then you get suspended a year for this. Like that's yeah. There's right. there's, there's something missing here. You're right. But the, what's Big missing? Time. What's Big missing time. is the two game suspension is too low. Yeah. No, that's I agree. But everything else, it seems, very few instances in the NFL has anyone actually been made an example of. Yeah. Outside of Calvin Ridley for making a fifteen hundred dollar bet and Josh Gordon for fucking smoking weed and Ray Rice. Ray Ray's only got like six games. I thought he got a, and and they tried season. to make an example out of the Panthers owner, but he was in the preliminary he was on his way out the door of, anyway, yeah. of getting ready to sell the team anyway. So it was like a headline, like a forced sale. But he was moving on in, in, in a matter of a year or two anyway. Well, now that Wilson is with the Broncos, now they're 12 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. What if it wasn't Russell Wilson who was traded to the Denver Broncos? <laughs> what if it was Carson Wentz who was traded to the Broncos? Would that have made you happier, Jeff? That would have made me happier. I'm not going to lie. I, I liked a few get ready for Mitch Trubisky to the Broncos season tweets. Like I even was hitting the like button on those in the hour between the Rodgers and Wilson. <laughs> So Wentz gets traded to the Washington Commanders with Russell Crowe as their new mascot. Him and Tugga fighting around the world. <laughs> what are they doing? So what, what, what kind of trade no, no, is no, this? No, they didn't give up much. Two thirds. But why do you want Carson Wentz starting for you? Well, I mean, there is potential what? there, right? Potential I mean, for what? I mean, he played decently last season. He was season. okay. What's he, that getting you? Well, Washington made the playoffs last year you're not winning ago. shit with Carson Wentz well yeah but you're not giving up very much then draft either. a quarterback inside the top 10 you and play that you, guy you can still do I'd that. rather rebuild like entirely than just sign Carson Wentz and try to win seven games oh I, I I don't think this is a neither fish nor foul situation I think it's a spot where it's a relatively low price investment for a quarterback who is decent fine he's fine he's decent i'd rather mitch trubisky i think they're like might be an element of unknown with mitch trubisky still is there anything better than a crappy quarterback going to be a backup for a year and everyone's like you know what he might be great there's a market for Mariota right now i'm sure there is no i, I think actually, i don't yeah i don't hate the washington trade because they didn't give up much for him and so it's fine there's word out that they had a better offer for russell wilson, wilson. But it, Except two factors. They extended the picks over three years and Wilson had a full no had a had a no trade, so he did not want to go to Dan Snyder. Or a stadium Makes that's sense. falling apart, yeah. Well, Tyler Huntley just re signed a with a one year deal with the Ravens. I would have went after him rather than Wentz. And it probably would have taken the same amount to get him. Two thirds, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I like, uh, but the thing is that they made the trade they made, and the question is to ana analyze what they did. And like, if I were to give it a grade, I'd say that's like a, a solid B. That's a C minus is it trade. The antithesis of everything that they need there, though. Like, they need assuming we can feel about their defense like we did in summer of twenty one. Like, isn't he the worst type of quarterback to play with that dominant defense? Like, always capable of the dumbest things. Sure. But there are also games he's going to play that may preserve them when the defense has a down. Like the Ravens game a, where he was amazing. He has games, right, where he is good. Listen, I'm not saying that Carson Wentz is a D-level quarterback. Sounds but like we, it. we just talked about, I think that Rodgers is worth the $50 million because he's one of those guys. And the only way you can really win in the NFL is if you can have one of those guys playing quarterback for you. Well, I don't know about you, but I ate a donut with his with his jersey on it at the Super Bowl. You had the, it had his wrong. No, it, it had his number yeah, it on it, his not Foles' number. Foles number. Yeah. But either way, he's not one of those guys. Straight up. No, he's not. He's so not. what are you doing here? Are you trying to win the Super Bowl, which I think is supposed to be the goal of every team? Yeah, but Ma and you have to think Matt that Stafford's all not one of those quarterbacks. He they was, just, he was at least one when, we, when we did the top 10 quarterback show last year and we listed our 10 best quarterbacks in the NFL that we would want for this year, I think he was both in Jeff and I's top 10. He was like number eight or number nine. And okay. he's like number 11 for you. We all saw the You potential. can't compare Stafford to... No, no that's no, what, that's no, what no, I'm no. saying. I don't My think that you can. can. You can, I mean, the 49ers 
We got to a Super Bowl and got to a championship game with below level quarterback play. You can I would rather have Garoppolo than can, have Wentz. You can succeed with below level quarterback play, but I don't think he's below level. I think he's slightly above level. And like, is that worth two thirds in a world where there aren't enough good quarterbacks to fill a roster? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, what's the yeah, but part? we're not talking about a team that's an upgrade from incompetent to slightly competent quarterback away from challenging for a Super Bowl. They, but they're in a very super, super weak division where if they win nine or ten games, they can probably win a division. And why not? Like, what are they supposed to do? Just die? Just supposed no, to do nothing? D- almost do what, not necessarily do what Seattle is doing, but either go find someone like a Trubisky or a Mariota or someone that could potentially have this upside. They might suck, but so does, like, what is the upgrade from Wentz from Heineke? Honestly. I think it's marginal, but it's, Ma- it's marginal. It's, 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 it's marginal there. at best. But it's there. Just go draft a quarterback. You have picks. Yeah, but you can do that. Now you have fewer picks. You have their third round picks. Either way, you need that. that, Those are depth picks. Ask the Rams. They got a ton of third round picks. I don't. Okay. Well, you guys hate it more than I do. I actually think it's okay. And I think that it'll probably pay dividends. They could make the playoffs. That's what I mean. They could be a playoff team. And I think that's a rip roaring success. Is it? Sure. Okay. Well, I think it is. That's because you're a Jets fan. Fair. When was the last time the Jets made the playoffs? 2010? Yeah. 2010. Sounds pretty good. 2010. Thanks been a decade over a decade yeah it's that's, been that's, over that's a pretty good uh eric fisher is going to become a free agent jeff chargers going to yeah. sign him they have so much money oh my goodness how could they pass i mean they do have a need at right tackle but for me the big rumor in charger land is uh there's some reports that we're like at the front of the line ready to do this already jc jackson corner from the patriots yeah, makes sense um there's rumors of uh yeah corner like we're, we're gonna spend a lot of money on defense and what we did last year but you saw us bring in like Corey Lindsley, Filer, and then go use a first round pick um, on tackle. Like that sort of effort is going to be put into the front seven. And we're going to be that team you saw last year. And hopefully we'll have the 19th ranked defense and not 28th. And we're going to get the wins we need to compete with the teams that Tim does not feel we can compete with. The AFC with. top to bottom is as loaded as I have ever seen it. Uh... And the Chargers are not at the moment, in my opinion, one of the top seven teams because the depth is just so profound. I'm sorry. But you have to allow the offseason to fulfill itself. Well, you don't because you're betting them already. So you're not... So, I bet so, them every year. That's like me. Okay, like, but then you can't tell me then that I have to let the offseason unfold if you're saying, I don't care what happens in the offseason. I'm going to bet the Chargers at oh dickety my God. six to no, one. You are... Dickety I, six. Can, can some human explain... Explain this to him. I don't even want to waste time. Okay. Like well, I made a bet because I hit. A, I bet them to win that thing every year because I'm an you idiot. Didn't, because you Jeff is a more problem bets. gambler like Calvin Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> you did so that you were going to make more bets and more bets and more bets. You said if we got to 32, you. I said if they if they I thought I bet them at 25 to one. If they got if the Packers got, uh, if Aaron Rodgers went to Denver and the books throw out 30, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. If anyone wants to give sure. me a 30, I'll do it. If you right now, Herbert's like 14 or 15 to one to win MVP. I don't want it, but show me a 20. I'll eviscerate it. Fine. I'll eviscerate then it. Don't I don't care. Then don't... I'm like you at the grocery store, pal. I'm not looking <laughs> at prices. There's certain things we just put in the cart. <laughs> <laughs> you then put stuff in a cart and then hide in the aisles, Jeff? I was diffu- <laughs> I was diffusing a situation. <laughs> Preventing tr- trouble. I'm a peacemaker. All right, let me give you. This is for you, Tim. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Deshaun Watson. Not playing next year, but on the Texans. The starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers or in jail. Those are your three options. I don't know that you can go to jail over civil charges. I believe the criminal charges are being pressed up against him soon now. Okay. I think so. That's what I was reading. I will take your first off. Yeah, let's see. Uh, The first step towards resolution will be the presentation of Watson's criminal sexual assault misconduct case to the grand jury this Friday. Okay. So that could go very poorly. Yeah. I, I think the likeliest outcome is that he is, again, on the Texans and doesn't play. I said last year, and I'll say again, I don't think he ever takes another snap in the NFL. And I... See, no reason to think anything otherwise. I think he's starting for the Panthers, Jeff. I 100% agree with you, Pat. We have sort of talked about this all through last year, even when the Dolphins were the hot take. This owner, in, in like he is as impatient as anything. He doesn't care. 
they're going to do this. They, I would bet, make the bet, even as the chalk, he will be the quarterback of the Panthers. Certain teams, organizations will stomach the situation. To me, they are 150% one of them. And let's bring a front-end quarterback to the NFC. You look at that Wilson package, and you can argue Watson's got to go for more. So we'll see. Because he's got to go. No, I see. I I don't think that you can argue that he has to go for more. Because he he, he comes with a lot of baggage right now. I can't imagine. He's younger. He's better. He has a contract. I Uh, I would agree with Jeff on all those fronts. Well, the younger part, because he was born after Wilson. But everything else is sort of like (laughs) up in the air. I think that he's better than Wilson. Like at this this stage of his career. He just missed a year. He'll miss another year, or at least maybe part of this year. Hey, Michael Vick went to jail. His and team came went back four and, and twelve the year before he played. Like I don't know. Like I'm sure he's fine, but like personally, I don't want to see him play if he's guilty of what he's. You done. think he goes for less than than that Wilson thing? Yes. Like, I can't imagine a team dealing. Well, who the who are the Panthers bidding against? Right? Who in their right mind is going to offer the similar deal? So it's a question of market. The Steelers have said that they are out. Who do you think starts for the Steelers next year? Do they draft someone? Do they get Jimmy G? Went Jameis? Jameis, I mean, is a pretty good Ben. Re- like the facsimile of like Jameis. Jameis yeah. from Ben. I mean, Jameis yeah. is just kind of younger Ben. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it for them. And who starts for Indy? That's a good question. That feels like the Garoppolo. Jacob Eason? I mean, he almost did yeah, this year, Gar- right? that feels Before they like made the wins trade, wasn't Jacob Eason supposed to be the guy? Like, I, no, I don't think so. I think he was supposed to be their backup. Yeah. I did see, like, maybe, it was, maybe it's Garoppolo. Do you remember when Scott Tolzien started for them? I sure do. Or Curtis Painter? They've had a... Re- Cur- Curtis Painter <laughs> got the Jets into the playoffs. They Then the 2009 year, we were 7-7. Seven and seven. We went into Week 16. The Colts didn't play anybody because they had the, everything wrapped up. And the Jets had to beat the Colts, who were 14-0 at that point, I think, or 13-1. We beat them, and then we beat Cincinnati on Sunday Night Football. We get into the playoffs, and we beat a couple of teams in the playoffs, and uh, we lost in the championship game. So, yeah, uh, to that to very Colts, same Colts right? team, to the very same Colts team that uh, took us out when we have a, had a 17-6 to lead in the AFC Remember the early Braylon Edwards. Yeah, I, I, I remember that very vividly. vividly down the left sidelines. Yeah, I, was, uh, I, I could not contain my joy. I... I the Pittsburgh situation is interesting. Uh, the internet speaks like Trubisky's getting a real job and getting good money. Too, see, see, so. I I heard he was just going to go with Dayball to the Giants and be basically be the backup for when Jones sucks through three games. Then okay, that Trubisky's was the, the initial starter. rumor, but then the rumor has now switched to there's actually a market for Trubisky. The Giants don't really have a ton of cap room that they can't overspend on a quarterback who might not even be an upgrade on the one they have. Um, today, it sounds like the Giants have been priced out of Trubisky, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That's but we'll a, that, see. That's pathetic. <laughs> Maybe he's good. Maybe. I mean, he's, I, I actually, Trubisky's okay. But again, like. Maybe he can have a Tannehill type career. Yeah. But wouldn't you rather Trubisky than Wentz no. in the sense that yes, like there's an unknown no, ceiling that exists with Trubisky no, that we don't, don't feel exists? See, I would, but I mean, this is you being Mr. I don't want to take any risks. It was. It's very much to the same of, I still wish Trey Lance had started for the 49ers in the playoffs. Because we saw what happened when the ball was put in Jimmy's hands to try to win that game. He fucking blew it. Yeah, and he was terrible. Also got to the playoffs because the ball was put in his hands against yeah, the Rams. Yeah. And he did get them down the field and get them there. But now we're into the playoffs. We need him to actually step up and be a game changer, and he is not. Yeah. And that defense wasn't good enough to carry them like yeah. it had the last I, I time. Think At least with Lance, they probably flame out and don't win a game. They probably lose to the Cowboys or don't make the playoffs with Lance. But I do feel like they had a better chance of winning the Super Bowl if his upside wow. came through. And I think it's the same thing with Trubisky right now. Like you know what you're getting from Wentz. A first-round playoff loss at best. What do you get from Trubisky? Well, he might be 5-12, and 12, or- but he might be good. Or a first round playoff loss, like or, he, or he was. but I would rather be maybe four and twelve, four and twelve, now, see, or maybe good than be nine and seven, eight. And I eight. would not. The NFL is so competitive that you don't want to cast your lots that way. Just get in. If you get in, you can make noise. The Bengals came within a snap of winning the Super Bowl. Like, just get in. The Bengals also have... The Bengals were a snap of winning the Super Bowl. They were not the better team in a single playoff game they played. Okay, but they... Other than the second sure, half. Sure, but the, the, you're big making my the, point. the big difference between the Bengals right now, as we talk about it in terms of quarterback, they have one of the guys. No, but my point is just get in. Get in, get in, get in. And I, I think that Trubisky doesn't provide enough upside to take that risk. But Wentz I don't think, does? I don't think Lance provides enough competency for that. Yeah, I think Wentz does. 
wrong. I, oh, I'm wrong about everything. Wrong. I'm wrong. You're wrong about this. I'm Wentz wrong does not. at least once an hour. But I, I think this it's it's fine. I think it's fine. If they, if Washington was going to have that package to try to get Russell Wilson, they should have got Deshaun Watson. I don't think. You really don't think Dan Snyder would have been like, fact, uh, you know what, Deshaun, I'm, you're fact, not, you're not for me, pal. Actually, I think exactly that's what he would have thought. It's like I can't. I don't think he gives a shit what anyone thinks. That's been know. his entire mo. I don't know. I think he cares a great deal of what people think and tries to hide it. But you got you got time for baseball, Jeff, or you got to get out of here? How long? Like I got five minutes. Five minutes. Give us your your baseball take. When does baseball come back? And do we care? I care a little bit because I love the Blue Jays and they're set up to be a good team. So it would be unfortunate. It'd also be crazy that as a fan of my team, it's been. Think about how many years it will have been. Like, Boba Shit, Vladdy Guerrero have never played a full normal baseball season in Toronto, and they're going into, like, their fourth year. It's really weird and creepy in that respect. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of entertained by, like, triggered fantasy guy, though. <laughs> like, as <laughs> well, much as I'm I... frustrated baseball isn't happening, triggered fantasy guy not being able to draft on Twitter has given me a lot of entertainment. Amen. I'm not going to lie, Pat. <laughs> I, I want to reverse engineer that a little bit just to, I actually feel for a lot of my uh, fantasy people out there, uh, the people who have yeah, jobs. Think that, about poor Garyan. Poor Garyan. What's Garyan? We, we're going to have to fucking deal with Raptors tweets during the NBA offseason. <laughs> oh, I just saw Scotty Burns at the local gym. He was working on all of it. Just like, okay, Garyan, let's pump the brakes a little bit. At least I can hear him be excited about the Blue Jays for a month, maybe, if they come back. But there are a lot of people working in this industry, and it's not just in this industry. It's people that work at the stadiums, people who cover baseball. Fortunately for people in our industry, or at least my industry, of uh, betting and or fantasy, no one really just does baseball anymore. Because that stopped being a yeah, viable market like five a golf years ago. Town. Yeah. You can just become a golf tout, like everybody did. Everyone did become a golf tout. <laughs> everyone did. Just like everyone was a marble tout. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you, you had a niche in the downhill cheese races. Yeah. The, that the, was the move. That was the move. But do you think it comes back? Oh, sure. And sooner than people think, probably. May? May 1st? Oh, maybe before that. Maybe by the middle of April. I think there's some momentum that I've been reading uh, towards getting things done. Some of the changes I like, I have to say. Give us the changes that you like. I like the, the banding of the shift. It's fine. It's just like basketball but, banding but, but the zone how, how do you ban the shift? Like what is, what are Two the... infielders maximum may play on the right side Short of the Shortstop can't cross second two, base. Just, There's just things you You must do. have two infielders uh, and two, uh, two infielders to the left of second base and two infielders maximum to the right of second base. Okay. And I don't, uh, and I think people, and I totally agree with you, Tim. You look at every other sport, they make changes constantly, specifically exactly. the NFL. Hockey got, hockey got rid of you. The lo uh, you couldn't do the left-wing lock anymore, essentially, in mm -hmm. hockey. No two-line pass. No two-line pass, which is dumb. That should, like, that should always uh, yeah, be a Yeah, you've got to make uh, the game offside. more, it just... Exactly. So I don't mind it. I actually think it's about time, and we'll remember living through that like four-year area bigger where the shift. Making the bases bigger seems stupid. I'm in. I'm against Listen, it just because it, it seems dumb. If it was leading to injuries, then why not? I think it's just to you can try to encourage more stolen bases, but I don't think that's what's holding people back from stolen. The problem is, and everybody knows this: there's too many strikeouts, too many home runs, and too many walks. You have to do something to eliminate the, those three outcomes being the only outcomes in baseball. Did people knowing too much about baseball room baseball? Yes. And, but it was it was inevitable, right? Because you want to succeed. Like, the problem is you'll talk to people about it. And they'll say, yeah, well, because that's a smart move. Well, yeah, no one's disputing that. But it's so smart, it's a pyrrhic victory. It's, it's, it's the Ouroboros eating its own tail. So now baseball's unwatchable because everybody hacked it. Hacked the, like, it's like if everyone had a game genie, then game genies wouldn't have been cool because because everyone would have had them. And the games wouldn't have been challenging, right? And they complain about the length of the game, but... That's only because the game is boring. It's because no, no every batter takes five. No, no. Here's the thing. Do you know who doesn't complain about baseball games being five hours? Baseball fans. Yeah. You know who does? People who don't really watch but baseball, like, like me. I, I think it's too fucking long it's and boring. Too long, but I'm not watching it. I anymore. grew up watching Cito Caston tell his boys to take a swing at the first pitch if it's a strike. <laughs> no one does that anymore because it's not analytically intelligent. So baseball has to do something, and getting rid of the shift will be part of that. Pitch clock, yes or no? I'm not opposed to I'm it. Pro. I'm pro. Pro pitch clock. To. I'm not in favor of it. I'm not against it. I think whatever. I'm indifferent. Getting rid of the DH, I don't think it's, it will slow the game down. It won't. Uh, 
or sorry, getting rid of the adding the DH to the National League will slow the game down. It won't speed the game up. Is is there any sort of proposal where you can only use so many pitchers in a game until you get to extra well, innings? Well, they already have that sort of where you have to face three consecutive batters where the inning has to end. But I don't know. Some I I, I think banning the shift. Let's try it out. See if it works. I I don't like watching five guys bunched over on the right side. Obviously, pros just can't beat that shift. Uh, and it's dumb. I want to see more ground balls and more singles, more doubles, and more uh, stolen bases. That's what that's what's exciting about baseball. Who knew? But also, we... the shift like takes away the amazing like diving catch. Absolutely, too. absolutely. Like these amazing does. outfielders like going airborne, going in one direction because there's like four bodies. It screws bodies up there. all the defensive it's... metrics, right? It screws up all the defensive metrics. And the funniest is when pitchers are now complaining about the shift, but when there's like a routine ground ball through shortstop, but they've shifted him the pitcher gets all mad like you're supposed to be there yeah so, i don't know they want it both ways agreed well let's see if we get it in any way i'm confident we're not playing fantasy baseball this year we haven't played fantasy baseball in years and you know i can't draft matt holiday i'm not interested not a single person complained when we disbanded our 16 person fantasy baseball league we didn't even tell people we weren't having no, it. I mean, no one even asked if we were having no it. i mean occasionally i might miss it by looking at a box going, gee, I wonder who I might have drafted, but then it passes. You would have drafted Matt Holiday. Yeah, Miguel like Cabrera, you did Matt Holiday. Well past their prime, too. Not not Coors Matt Holiday, like the Yankees Matt Holiday. Yeah, it was St. Louis, but yeah. But apparently, uh, my only point of reference now is that every player in Major League Baseball is Adam Dunn. Yeah, everyone hits 38 <laughs> home runs and bats 230 and has and draws a, a ton of walks. Yeah, it's no fun. Brad Fulmer really missed his calling. Yes. He was he was 25 years too early. Or Dave I think. Kingman. Yeah. Hmm. All right. That will do it on the Pat Mayo experience. Jeff Feinberg, you ready for the Players' Championship? I am very much ready for the Players' Championship. I loved talking football. Froze, I guess I'll need to prepare myself for the shrapnel that's going to come all winter as we talk football. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty fired up. So let's give her. You're frozen on the screen in like the weirdest way but possible. We can, but we can hear you. We can hear you. That's fine. So we should probably get out of here. Uh, happy vacation to the coin. Want to thank you all for watching. And of course, for being in studio, I do want to thank Tim and August. Tim and August. That is not my name. You got to wait for the camera switch when you do that. I know. But you didn't. Oh, just now we're up there. There we are. He's gone. He just now. Now we have an infinite loop of this single two shot. How does it feel being in the studio? We'll get better at this. I felt like it was fun, and it yeah, well, was, it was fun. Obviously. And it was an interesting experience, and I enjoyed sort of being six sword lengths away from you, like you're the prime minister and the leader of the opposition across the dispatch box. But it was fun. Does that mean it. we have to wear like wigs next time we come in? I would prefer it. We're in the House of Lords now. Well, it's funny. I, I didn't show up here alone. My friend Christopher showed up too. <laughs> oh my God. You see, he came in through the door over there and said hi to everybody. He's off filming a movie. Oh, is that true, Christopher? Yeah, no, it is. I'm going to film movies. All right then. Bye, Christopher. Okay, bye. I'll be back soon. Oh, look. There's my friend, Walter Matthau. Hi there. How are you? Ah! <laughs> Didn't expect that. All right, let's wrap this up. That was nice work, Ron. Do you see any of the Oscar movies yet? Uh, just the one there on uh, uh, Netflix. The the Adam uh, McKay. One. Oh, Up in the Sky. I liked it. It wasn't great, but I liked it. So I thought should... it was funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know it really competes against your worldview that global warming is a hoax. No, I think it was poorly. Big done. hoax. I just think it was poorly. Fake done. news. It's poorly done, but Adam McKay is really good at making bad movies these days. So, did you see Dune? No, Dune I did not was see Dune. incredible. Everybody kept saying how good Dune was, but it was still in the time of the pandemic where it was hard to figure out when the movies were open. I, I, I watched it on a plane when I went down to Vegas. It's fucking great. I like the idea of Dune. I like the story. I saw the old Dune, but I'm um... the old Dune. I mean, I love old Dune just because I enjoy every David Lynch jam. But uh, this one's much better. They should have had David Lynch direct this one. See what he could do. They gave him 18 episodes of Twin Peaks on Showtime. The best thing he's that done was in, good enough for me. The best thing he's done in 10 years is it's. March 14th, 2022. And if you can believe it, it's a Friday once again. Nice and sunny and 72 degrees in Southern California. We love you, David Lynch. We do love We're you, fans. David Lynch. For Tim, for me, for Paul behind, it's not really the glass. He's just kind of standing over there and frozen face fucking Jeff over there. Thank you all for watching. We're pumped to keep the football show going during the off season. We'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!